What is good, YouTube? This is your boy, Aaron. It's Brian. And this is the Courtside View Podcast, and we are back today to discuss the NBA and a couple other topics outside of sports. Let's get down and let's get down to it. Um, So, biggest news a few days ago, J.J. Redick <laughs> gets signed to the Lakers. You know, we talked a little bit about it, if J.J. Redick were to get signed with the Lakers as a new head coach. But it's official. He is going to do his introductory press conference today. I think one thirty Pacific time. So, <laughs> listen. I said this before. I'm gonna say it again. But I'm, I'm not mad at the hire. I'm not mad at the hire. I think with JJ Redick, he seems like a brilliant individual. He seems like he knows X's and O's really well. Just going off of the mind of the game podcast and the old man of the three podcast. He seems like he understands basketball a lot. And it seems like LeBron James respects his intellect when it comes to the game of the basketball. Um, Austin Reeves, he also, he interviewed Austin Reeves. They also talked as well. And Austin Reeves seems like he likes J.J. Redick. And I think his agent even spoke glowingly about uh, J.J. Redick as well. So those are a couple good signs. But it remains to be seen. We got to see it play out during the regular season. What, what is your reaction to the news that J.J. Redick is officially the next Lakers head coach? I think it's hilarious. Oh, okay. Because, in okay, in defense of J.J. Redick, I think he could be a good coach down the line. But for what the Lakers need as of right now, I don't think he was the guy. I don't think getting an inexperienced coach at the end of Braun's career, especially if you plan on winning now, Winning a championship, I don't think this was the right move. I feel like you could have went to a different direction, get some guy with some experience at least, someone who's been on a a, a successful coaching staff. Like you said, the guy from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. But I don't think, I don't know, maybe you didn't want to come to L.A.? Yeah, I don't know. Nah, I doubt, I doubt that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. They, they <laughs> didn't want him. Didn't look. They, yeah, they just didn't look. But, um. Yeah, I, I don't. I think like this is a, in my opinion, it's like a long term. This would be like a long term hiring, in 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 my eyes because he he's a first year coach. He has no co like none like not even assistant. He ain't coach high school basketball. Nothing. He's just literally he was commentating in podcasts. Now he's a head coach. I've never seen a promotion like this before. The day after Juneteenth. <laughs> But hey, man, that's what that's what the LeBron the the clutch stimulus gets you, huh? I need can, can they sign the podcast to clutch? We need some we need some promotion, Dad. Going, but uh, I mean, I think he'll be better than Darvin Scam. I mean, Ham. Um, so I guess that's a plus. Oh, that's a major yeah, plus. That's a that's a plus. But I don't, we'll have to see, man. I think I think it's funny though. I think it's funny. <laughs> Comes down to the coaching staff. Who's he going to hire in the coaching staff? I don't want Scott Brooks. That whole, oh, hero ball type of offense. I don't want Scott Brooks. There's a reason he was, I think he may have been let go by Portland. There's a reason for it. That whole hero ball nonsense does not work in the league today. You got to get somebody better than Scott Brooks. Um, Listen, it boils down to this. Can you get the respect from LeBron James and Anthony Davis? If you can get the respect out of those two guys, then everybody else will respect LeBron respects him. Okay, but then, you know, got to get Anthony Davis respect as well. Can you get both of their respects? If you can do that, I believe everybody else is going to fall in line. Because those two dudes, they're going to they're gonna cape for uh, J.J. Redick and everybody else. They're just going to have to fall in line because the two superstars that they respect, they respect LeBron, they respect AD and their intelligence. They're going to be like, all right, if those two guys respect J.J. Redick, then we got hey, we to just say, all right, we cool. We cool with it. And I, I believe it comes down to those two dudes. I believe Anthony Davis – and LeBron James, they're they're very smart individuals. They understand the game on a different level. And with Darvin Ham, you can just tell in the huddle that they were just looking at him and like, dude, what are you doing? Don't settle. Go hard on them dudes. Like this is not this is not a coach that understands the game on a level that we understand. Like you can't comprehend what we're thinking at this moment. And it just felt like there wasn't any good communication back and forth between Anthony Davis, LeBron, and Darvin Ham. With J.J. Redick, it seems like he has a better understanding, a better grasp of today's players and today's game. 
that he can deliver whatever it needs to be that will approve that will be approved by LeBron or be approved by AD and I think he'll be a better collaborator with LeBron and Anthony Davis. I don't think it's going to be my um my way or the highway type of mentality that maybe Darvin Ham was or they're we're going to have to have it where LeBron James is going to ultimately say no 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 we're going to race this. Give me the clipboard. We're going to race this and that. Like I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it's going to be a cl- collaborative effort like almost like a group project in a way where you got LeBron and JJ Redick like all right let's let's figure this figure that almost like um remember when Tom Brady went to to the Buccaneers Mm -hmm. and he was um he was always with he was always talking to Byron Leftwich about the offense how how he wants the offense to operate and everything I I think it's going to be something similar to that where they're going to be constantly communicating between one another trying to figure out all right how we want the offense to flow how we want the offense to look how we can how we can get different players involved um, without me just constantly dominating the ball all the time and I, I believe with JJ Reddick because he was on a podcast with LeBron there's going to be that chemistry that has been missing with all these other coaches that have um, tried to coach LeBron and I think with LeBron you need somebody that's highly intelligent that understands the game on just a level that he understands and with JJ Reddick I believe that's the case yeah possibly I could see it but you know just coaching is a whole it's multiple facets of coaching and Mm -hmm. stuff one thing I found funny was I think it was like I don't know I'm pretty sure JJ said it when he got hired he said something about making AD the prime run through offense through AD mostly and have LeBron play more off ball I said yeah good luck with that (laughs) <laughs> LeBron off ball. Come on now, let's get serious here. I I think I don't know. I don't know because I've seen he he has played. What point guard do you really have to facilitate offense? Right, right, right. I, I'll say this because I've seen LeBron play a lot more off ball since he's been in LA. You know, when he was in Cleveland, when he was with Miami, it was a lot of him dominating basketball. Now he did have there were moments where Dwayne Wade would initiate the offense, Kyrie would initiate the offense, but more times than not, he was the one that orchestrating the offense. In L.A., it felt like it was a lot more of him deferring, a lot more of getting into play calling, getting into action. You know, he would he would be cutting a lot more. He would be the screener rather than somebody setting a screen for him. He would be the person setting the screen. Or, um, you know, he would get in the post. Somebody would get him the ball in the post or whatever. It was a lot more of that recently, but still – he was still dominating the ball a lot. He was still, you know, doing the same stuff that he was doing in Miami and in Cleveland. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how how that's going to work. I do think LeBron can't. He can obviously play off ball because we've seen him do it. It's just the amount of off ball that he's going to be doing. That's where the question lies. I don't know how much J.J. wants him to play off ball. I, I don't think that's a recipe for success if you say it's 50-50. I don't think that's possible that you could have LeBron playing 50-50 off ball, on ball. There's no way that's going to happen. But um, I would say like 70-30, him with the ball in his hands, him playing off ball, if it's like 70-30, possibly, maybe. But it all, it all depends on who's the point guard. Because mm-hmm. uh, D'Angelo Russell, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea <laughs> if I want D'Angelo Russell handling the ball after what I see in the playoffs. He's very untrustworthy. I can't I can't count on him all the time. He was supposed to be that guy come out of college, but he's never he's never been that guy. Like he was supposed to be, but that's just not his game. He's a scoring guard. He likes to score. That's where he's most comfortable at. And when he's not doing that, it's very hard for him to orchestrate an offense and, and you feel comfortable. Exactly. Um, Austin Reeves, I mean, he could do it sometimes, but again, like he's not that's not where he's comfortable at. He, he wants to be a scoring guard. That That's more so what he wants to do. So they're going to have to figure out – they're going to have to find a point guard that you can feel comfortable orchestrating an offense and LeBron could just be be a screener or he can play off ball or something like that because in the playoffs it, it was shown that if it was – if LeBron wasn't having the ball – <laughs> oh, it was it was going to be a Disaster. nightmare. But but you could contribute that how the offense was constructed, because the way that the offense was constructed for the Lakers, it it, it was so Bron AD dominant that anybody else that would try to orchestrate the offense, they they, they looked like they were deer in headlights. Mm-hmm. So 
maybe with J.J. Reddick, just like with the Nuggets, just like with other teams that are have a system in place that allow the role players to shine, maybe with this offense – it will allow more players to shine other than your top two guys and maybe Austin Reeves. I think that's what they're trying to go with because these past these past seasons it's really been just LeBron, A D, figure it out. Hopefully this can be a different situation where you have other players contributing because I've seen the talent. I, I we have talent. Like Roy, he can get his own but he can get his own shot. Like you can call you can call a play for Roy. I've seen it in the past. Like when we traded for him, there were especially that Memphis series, I've mm-hmm. seen him go get his own shot. I've seen him you call a play for him. You put him in certain spots where he's comfortable at he can he can get he can get a shot up. Yeah true. He can create his own shot. But it it, it depends on where do you give him the ball. Because with Darvin Ham one thing I noticed this past season is that, especially at the beginning of the year, they would have him like at the three point line, just standing at the three point line, yeah. and they would give him the ball and just that's not what he's comfortable with. They, they expect him, oh, you create, go go create your own shot yourself. Like no, like he's he's more comfortable fifteen feet and below. You can't just have him at the three point line like he's just a regular wing player, like a um, like a like a Michael Porter Jr. or a. Um, like a Paul George or something, and think and expect that oh he he can he can you know dance on somebody and create his own shot like that's that's just not his game like he's more of a get him down to about the free throw line and in and with this past season they just kept doing it over and over again and I, that's why you see Darvin you see um LeBron and Anthony Davis at times and even Austin Reeves at times just scratching their head like yo like what 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 are we doing yeah. like the offense like what what is this and. With with uh, JJ Redick, I just hope that there's more, it's more fluidity. There's we incorporate um, different type of plays instead of just doing a lot of freelancing, just figuring out ourselves. I'm pretty sure because cause, um, did you see that interview he had with Dan Hurley? Nah, I, I mean, uh, nah, I'm, I haven't seen, I haven't okay. seen it. I, but they I was talking about like the way to utilize offensive weapons and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure it's a good, pretty it's a pretty good watch if you like to hear about X's and O's basketball and stuff. I think the offense will definitely look much better than it did last year, but it's just the other stuff, like you said, the coaching staff, um, personnel, person. I mean, the roster is solid, it's a playoff roster, but. Against need, Denver, mm-hmm. Minnesota, OKC. Okay, so mm-hmm. You need versatility. You yeah. need dudes that can play both ends. Yeah. You can't just have – we have too many specialists, guys that can only do one thing. D'Lo can only do one thing. That's like score. <laughs> right. And he, he's shaky at it at times. Roy, he can – all he can do is score. Like he can't play defense. Like his IQ on defense is atrocious. Vanderbilt, all he can do is play defense. He'll get you and, offense, and get defense, hurt. And rebounds. Yeah, and get hurt. Um, Austin Reeves, he, I would say Austin Reeves, he does get hunted sometimes, but he, he does, he does try on defense. So I would say him. At least he can pass a little bit. Yeah, he could also pass. So he's probably the only guy with some who, versatility. Yeah, who can who do multiple things besides like LeBron and Anthony Davis. So everybody else is really like a specialist. And you need more and Y'all need some bigs, man. Jackson Hayes ain't cutting it. No, he's not cutting it. Probably, yeah, like a guy like Andre Drummond, you probably get him as like a backup big. You need somebody like that who can get you energy, get you rebounds, get you, get you, you know, a couple lobs. And Jackson Hayes is just not that dude. So, yeah, man, we just – this this offseason, we have to figure out a way to get a lot of more um, help, a lot more bigs, a lot more guys that can do multiple things because right now – the way that the roster were constructed, we thought that Gabe Vincent was going to be that dude that can give you uh, some the firepower heat, off the, the bench. The heat brick once know, again tricking the masses. I know, right? And like he, when you when he came back, I mean, he was a solid defender, but he couldn't shoot. Mm-hmm. And we expected him to be a good shooter for us. And because of the injury, when he came back, he just had didn't have a shot. This so. reminds me of the the way Eric Spoelstra coaches these guys and get them looking better they have reminds me when the Patriots did the same every free agent that left the Patriots you ain't hear from them after a season or two nope nope Logan Ryan Malcolm Butler yep. guys like that all trick 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 the league yeah trick the league that system is incredible it really is incredible. Man. Stephon Gill will beat the allegations, though. But that's because he was defensive player of the year. I mean before he even went to the Patriots he was, he yeah. was a really good corner for Buffalo so yeah. 
he was already that dude. It's just he when he went into when he went to the Patriots, it just went to a whole nother level. That system and those guys that that IQ. So yeah, he he was an outlier. Revis as well. We already knew Revis yeah. was that dude. He went to New England. He he was sort of uh, resurrected his career a little bit. And even even the first year with the Jets, he was still good. So, um, yeah, man, that's really what it is, man. It's, it's all about personnel. It's all about who who the coaches he hires, and also can he get the respect out of the players, sp- specifically the top two dudes on the roster. And if you can do all that, then he should have a really good first year as a head coach. If not, then it's going to be back a to the drawing board. Yeah, back to the drawing board. Really, really, that's that's what At it is. At least they ain't pay him like a, a ridiculous amount of money. Yeah, they paid him eight million a year. Yeah. So if you're paying them that little, I mean, we better get a good coaching staff. You better be yeah. paying for a good coaching staff. You're paying them for like eight million a year. You know, I think the contract total is like what sixty mil total. I, I, I doubt it. Sixty mil. If you're getting eight million a year, no way he's getting sixty million. That's a lot. That's a lot for JJ Reddick. Never coach. No way. Let me look that. I'm saying, eight million a year. No I, way. I don't know. I think, it, I think it's a six year. Let me see. I think it's like. Four or five years. There's no way it's a six year contract. It is. Um. Doo, 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 doo. Oh my bad. Thirty two million. Yeah, I obviously I knew that I knew that was gonna be thirty two. Like, I was about to say eight million a year. There's no way it's sixty million. But yeah, remains to be seen. I can't wait what he says in the press conference today. We'll see how that goes. I'm pretty sure he'll say the right stuff. He's media trained. <laughs> yeah, he yeah he is media trained. But I, I want to see, I want to see exactly like what what type of offense do you want to do? Mm. What 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 type of coaches do you want? What what do you what do you want from the players? True. What what do you expect? And that's what I want to see. That, that makes sense. That's what I want to see because Darvin Ham. I might I might go back and see his introductory press conference and what the hell he said. Because I want to, I want to get a comparison of what Darvin Ham said versus what JJ Reddick said. Because Darvin Ham, Darvin scam, he scammed us all, and when, and then he somehow found his weaseled his way back to Milwaukee. And and JJ and JJ Reddick, like a lot of people aren't as dumb as they once were. Like we 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 see, th- there's obviously people that are that that can get fooled at times, but like now with all the times that we've seen just how the coaches didn't work for the Lakers or for other teams as well, like, a lot of people are getting smarter, including myself. Like, you can't just go up there and say, oh, you know, I'm going to hold people accountable. Like, no, nah, that's that's not going to work anymore. That's you're supposed to do that. You're a coach. <laughs> that's not going to work anymore. Like, you have to really give specific details on what you're going to do. And we, I'm really going to see exactly what he's going to say and if he's going to give – any specific details of how he's going to improve this squad or not? Because I'm not I'm not going to be fooled anymore by these coaches' introductory press conferences. My biggest fear with Reddick is, well, actually, I hope he leans into it because that would make y'all worse. But I fucking hate it. If my biggest thing is, I hope he doesn't run a too modernized offense because mm-hmm. he's been known as an old basketball hater. Calling people plumbers and stuff. So if ain't no low post action, he be like, "We ain't playing that plumber ball." <laughs> oh, okay. That's the that's the only thing that I was like, "Oh my god, he could truly mess this up if he tries to run that super modernized offense. No low no post action. No just all threes. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that would be a <laughs> disaster. I, I LeBron would veto that. I, I think he would. I doubt that. Um, let's transition. Let's get to the. Ah, it's gonna be this gonna be very controversial. Top ten NBA players. Here we go. So I want to <laughs> make sure that there's no confusion. For me, I'm basing it off the 2023-2024 NBA season. I'm not gonna give a definitive top my definitive top ten players. I'm just going off of the 2023-2024 NBA season. Probably months from now, I'll give you a definitive top ten. But for right now, I want to do that. Be- I want to do this because I'm still conflicted on how I want to rank everybody. 
So that that's my that's the way I'm going to grade it. So it was it. like a rough draft. <laughs> Hell, rough draft. <laughs> Pretty much how we how we do the quarterbacks in the NFL. We we base it off just past season and not just in general off of like right. just resume and accolades and everything like that. With you, I don't, how how are you going to do yours? I'm gonna stick to the, the past season. Okay, so pretty much like how I'm doing. Yeah. It. Okay, so here we go. I'll, I'll start off with mine and I'll transition it to you. Okay. So, how should I do this? I think I should start off from ten. I'll start off from ten. Okay. All right. So for number ten on my top ten NBA players of the twenty twenty three twenty twenty four season. I have Kevin Durant at number mm. 10. You know, Kevin Durant, at his age, if he's like 35, he still averaged over 27, shot over 50% from the field, shot 40% from three. He was very efficient. I just think there's better players from this past season. I just think that although his numbers were great, made second team All-NBA, I believe – individually there are better players um i'm just that's just all i think and then also his defense took a dip as well so number nine lebron james i'm gonna give lebron james a nod Mm. 26 a game seven rebounds eight assists shot 50 plus percent from the field 41 percent from three yeah i think he was 75 he may have been 75 matter of fact let me make I, I want to make sure I'm right on this. He may have been seventy five percent from the line. That sounds about right. <laughs> I, I just wanna I wanna make sure I'm accurate on that. Uh let's see. What was it? Yeah, seventy five percent from the line. So a very efficient LeBron at year twenty one. Yeah. It's crazy. Or year 22. 21, 22. I, I, he drafted in 03. So 21. 21. So many years. I, I can't even keep track some of the time. Year 21, age 39. He's been in the that. league. Then a lot of these people that have been watching the sport. It's ridiculous. He He's he's had a phenomenal season. It's just the defense, just like what Kevin Durant took a dip. I just think he had a little bit of a better year than Kevin Durant, despite the record and everything like that. I just look at individually. Him alone, I feel like just all around and the efficiency numbers, I got to give LeBron the edge okay. slightly. So, number eight on my list, DeMontis Sabonis. I know you're like, what? DeMontis Sabonis? Let me give you. Not let, even top 100. Let, let, me, let, me give you, let me give you some stats. Okay, okay. 26 triple doubles. That's, that's one more than who? Jokic? Yes. The MVP. 73 double-doubles on the year. He averaged close to, I think it was close to 20 points per game. 19.4. 19.4, 13.7 rebounds, 8.2 assists. I think he shot nearly 60% from the field and 37% from three. Goddamn. And whenever he played Anthony Davis, what did he do? Box. He, he he played he played better than him in every yeah. single game. So I'm I'm giving Demontis Sabonis credit on that. I think he had the eighth best season by an individual player this past season. I know there's going to be a lot of people that disagree, but just going off of what I saw, going off of what he did against one of the top defensive players in the NBA as well, I got to give Demontis Sabonis a lot of credit. He stuffed the stat sheet more triple doubles than Jokic. 73 double doubles on the season. He was hooping. Dog. I'll that, give him that. I'll give him that. Just amazing numbers. Just it amazing makes this numbers. This so difficult. So many good players. Absolutely. Number seven. I'm going to go with Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson, the way he was able to carry that Knicks team to the playoffs, to, I think they had the second seed. With all those injuries, bruh, and he shot, and he was like, I think he scored, I think he averaged like close to 28 a game, I think close to 50% from the field. Very efficient numbers for a guard. He's like six, what is he, six feet, six one? Amazing. 
and he was good in the playoffs. Like this dude right here, man, I, I got to give Jalen Brunson credit. I think he finished top five in MVP voting. The dude had a tremendous season. I got to give all the credit to Jalen Brunson. He was the number one option. He made all the clutch shots from the Knicks. Even when Julius Randle was down, he was still able to get the Knicks to the number two seed. This dude deserves all the credit in the world. I got to give Jalen Brunson the number seven spot. And, um, yeah, number six on my list. I went back and forth between this player and Jalen Brunson, who I want to rank over. I went with Anthony Davis at number six. Second team, all NBA, first team, all defense. He had a phenomenal defensive year. Yep. He should have been he should have been top three in defensive votes. I don't care what anybody says. But you know, for whatever reason. He wasn't? No, he wasn't. Hmm. It was Bam, it was Rudy Gobert, and it was Victor Wimpinyam. I thought I thought Anthony Davis oh, should have been the top three. True. But you know, hey, politics as usual. Offensively, he he's been tremendous. I mean, he averaged over. I think he may have averaged over like twenty five. He averaged at least. I thought it was twenty. I think it's twenty four point seven. Some close, close enough. Yeah. Close to twenty five. He averaged like maybe eleven, twelve rebounds. He came back from the past two seasons where he he played seventy six games too. Something yeah, like that. man. Yeah, I gotta give him credit. I he have wasn't, to. He wasn't street closed this past year. He he, had, he I think he had he had um over a block a game, over a steal a game. Played all those games. You know, the past two seasons, he's been injured. He's been playing not a lot of games. But this season, he came back with, with the uh, the new CBA and how you're not going to make all NBA unless you get, like, 65 games. He was able to play more than that. Mm-hmm. And he's able to dominate on both ends of the floor. I have to give Anthony Davis credit on that. He had a good playoffs, too. He went toe-to-toe with um, Nikola Jokic. He went toe to toe with him, like he didn't back down at all. So yep. I have to give AD like a lot of love. 32, 32, 33, 25, and seventeen in Game Five. That was yeah. And I yeah. think, and I remember, um, I remember, I think he injured his. Uh, I forgot what yeah, he it was. did. He injured something. He injured something. It may have been a shoulder or something. In like, I think he may have been Game Four. So that, that you say, damn, he only had seventeen Game Five. I think because the shoulder was kind of bad. So I'm not gonna. You know, criticizing for that, yeah. on that, so. But yeah, man, he he's had a tremendous year. I have to give him six. All right, number five on my list. I'm gonna go with Jason Tatum. Mm. <laughs> see, see, I was afraid you was gonna leave him off. The no, list. no, I'm not. I'm not gonna see. You know, I don't like the Celtics, but I gotta give Jason Tatum credit now. I think he averaged. 26, almost 27. Yeah, he averaged like 47 damn near 20, from the field. Damn near 27, eight rebounds, nearly five assists a game, shot, good efficiency. I got to give Jason Jason Tatum credit. I mean, he was the best player on the – all defense team? No, he, no, he, he didn't make, okay. make it. But, um, you know, man, I mean – made all NBA, though. So. Best player on a championship team, yeah. best record. Yeah. Did the thing where he led the lead team in – Points, rebounds, and assists in a series. Yeah, forty-seven percent from the field, nearly thirty-eight percent from three, eighty-three percent for the line. I mean, the dude, the dude had a good year. He had a really, really solid year. So I'm gonna give him top five. I think he finished maybe top four in MVP voting. So yeah, Jason Tatum, he's he's in my top five. Well deserved. That does not mean I think he's a definitive top five player. I'm just saying in terms of this season, I believe he was he had a top five season. Mm. That that's just my opinion. Got you. All right, let's go to number four on my list. I'm gonna go with Giannis. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now, hey, I don't care what anybody says. I know, oh, the Bucks they weren't that good. They had their ups and downs, but if you look at individually, Giannis was still Giannis. He was yeah. still averaging over thirty. He was still averaging over. 10, 11, 12 rebounds. He was still the dominant force individually. So I'm I'm not going to just – I'm not going to be like, oh, Giannis isn't good anymore. Like, no, Giannis was still dominant. It's just the team around him wasn't that good. The coaching was, wasn't that good. It was, it was very toxic. I give Giannis number four. I just think he, he, he made first team All-NBA again. He played majority of this game. So I'm going to give Giannis at four. I, I just think he's so great that – we measure him to his MVP seasons. Yeah. We measure him the year he won the championship. And it's, it's so hard when you're that great. At times, you get penalized for it. Mm. And I think this year, I feel like it's fair to put him at four. He 
he's so dominant that we 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 um take for granted his greatness. And I think four is fair. I know I don't I don't know where you put Giannis, but I feel I feel like four is fair, especially you know the team didn't play too well. Ain't and, no shame in top five. <laughs> yeah, I mean I, I feel like it's fair. Number three on my list, I'm gonna go Luka Doncic. That's I thought you was gonna go Shea. Nah, I'm gonna go Luka Shea on this is one. Probably two. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on now. It's just it's so, a given. So it's much suspense. One. Yeah, I'm gonna go Luka on this one. He's obviously top three MVP voting. Carried his team to the finals. The dude mm-hmm. averaged. I think he may have led the league in scoring. He had 33 point. He he averaged damn near 34 points a game. Nine rebounds, nearly ten assists, close to a triple double, averaging damn near thirty four points. My yeah. God, enough said right there. Enough said. He's a machine. And during the playoff run, he he was the man. Oh, OKC, okay, yeah. he was uh, up and down, but he still got his team at the end of the day to the NBA Finals. I don't care what anybody says. Going to criticize Luca about his defense. Yeah, his defense needs some work, but that offense. It's too damn good. And, and he was playing hobbled. And even though his defense is not the greatest, the team the team defense overall during the regular season was pretty great once they once they got Gafford and PJ Washington. So even with Luka not playing great defense, the defense the team defense was still great. Right. So they just ran into a bad matchup. Exactly. A bad matchup. He can't he couldn't he couldn't roam anymore. He couldn't mm-hmm. hide him anymore. You switch on to him, he's it's pretty much over for him. So yeah. Give Luka number three. So, number two, I'm going to go with Shea Gilgis Alexander. You know, runner up for MVP, averaged over 30. For the past two seasons, he's averaged over 30. SGA has made a lot of people money. A lot of people money. Against the Mavericks series, he was the best player on the court. Yeah. Easily. easily. They had no answer for Shea. He, he was, was doing whatever he wanted out so there. So dominant. Unfortunately, up until the end, like he just, for whatever reason, he just couldn't figure out just to make the right play at the end. But overall, he, he had a great playoffs, great regular season. You could argue he should have won MVP. And, yeah, Shea. Best, Shea record, best record in the West. Best record in the West over the Nuggets, over the Timberwolves. Yeah, Shea, Shea has had an outstanding year. You got to give him all the credit in the world. His game is it's not the flashiest. But he plays the game the right way. If you, <laughs> if, you like, if you like the purity of the game, you respect the purity of the game, you respect the fundamentals of the game, that's what Shea is, and got to got to tip your hat on him. All right, number one, it's pretty obvious. It's Nikola Jokic, the MVP of the league, the guy that I believe is the best player in the world right now. I mean, I don't even, do I really have to say the you numbers? Really don't. Everybody, Jokic is just he a averages foregone. damn near a triple double every year. We already know he's going to get over fifty percent from the field. This dude has been tremendous for the past five years. Since twenty twenty three, I believe he's been the best player. This dude right here deserves all the love. He deserves all the praise. And then for just because he didn't win the finals this year, just because he lost to the Timberwolves, he still did his thing. He still showed up. Was it? On the best efficiency, no, but he still put up his numbers. Yeah. So I gotta give I gotta give Nikola Jokic all the love. He's he's the number one guy. He's the number one guy on my list, and that is my top ten. Okay. I'm gonna That's fair. send it off to you. Um. So after hearing some of the entries on your list, I'm changing my criteria. Oh, okay. I'm changing it from best of the 2020. 2024 season to just who I think is the top 10 players in the league. Okay. So, number one, I'm going to start off. You're going to start off from one? You're I'm going to start, start off, off at 10. one because I, oh. I think after the, the top five, it gets a little controversial. So okay. After, so, one, I'm going to go with Jokic, obviously. Mm-hmm. Two, it's not going to be Luka. It's going to be Giannis. I like it. Because I, I, I like Luca did some phenomenal things, but Giannis, we saw the performances in the finals, and I'm gonna take Giannis over the you know what plays I'm both ends. Yeah, I'm gonna take Giannis. Um, three is Luca. I have Luca at three. Four, I have Embiid. Five, I have Shea. Mm, yes, whoa. Five, yes. Shea is oh. Shea made the top five. He. He's been like the best guard, the best outside of Luka. He's the best guard in the league. 
Honestly, I mean over Tatum, man. Ooh, that's gonna ruffle some feathers. Hey, man. All right, hey, it's your list. It's your list. But Tatum is after uh, Shea. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Tatum, he has his flaws in the playoffs. He falters at times. But he somehow still leads the team in scoring, rebounding. The city. I don't know how he does it, but he gets the job done. He ain't had a most spectacular finals when he lost the finals and beat Jalen Brown for crying out loud. But he's still a top 10 player easily. Um, after Tatum. You might be surprised, but I'm going to go Anthony Davis. Oh, okay. I'm going to go Anthony Davis. Okay, I like it. He he really stepped up to the plate this past year, played 76 games, um, averaged 24.7, should have been top three defensive player of the year voting, honestly. I don't know how the heck. Um, Like, Bam is nice, but. Victor Victor Wembanyama. I mean, he did, like. He was nice, but the team wasn't good, though. True. True, but yeah, AD was really anchoring that defense. He made a lot of defensive plays, and I was like, wow, this man, this man is a monster on defense. And his offensive production, he, he was efficient. Yeah, It was at times where I was like, I, I was like, why are the Lakers going away from AD? Mm-hmm. They, he needs to take the game. He needs to, they need to get him the ball. He needs to take, he's taking the game over. And it's like, they would freeze him out in the second half. I'm like, where, what the heck happened to AD? He was cooking everybody mm-hmm. in the first half. So yeah, I'm going to go AD at seven. seven at seven. Yep. Eight. Eight, I'm going to go, I don't care what year it is, how old this man is. He just <laughs> he just continues to succeed yeah. and play good basketball. I'm going to go with LeBron James. Mm. LeBron James is still a top 10 guy, and I don't care what you say. There's, there's a, he's shooting better than he's ever had in his career. He's still putting up good numbers, and it's just LeBron, man. You can't, you can't, you can't do nothing about him. Father Time has not yet got him just yet. Yes, I feel like he's declined on the defensive end at times, mm-hmm. but he's still top ten guy. Come on now, uh, nine. And the hard part about these things is that there's so many good players mm-hmm. in the league, but they're young. Mm-hmm. You kind of want to see a little bit more work put in. But number nine, I'm gonna put Steph. Steph at nine. Yes, I'm gonna wow. put Steph. Here's why. I believe Steph Curry is still – he's easily a top three point guard in the league still. Yeah, I agree. And what he's had to work with with this Warriors team, the fact that they was even in the playoff race to begin with is great because Klay Thompson was stinking up the joint. Draymond Green was out there playing football mm-hmm. in UFC – he had to rely on Jonathan Kaminga, who just kind of got thrown into the fire, and it was and, and people. Oh, surprisingly, he's actually decent. Mm-hmm. Like and then like the then Brandon Pod Podminsky or whatever you pronounce his name. Like, come on, he's he he was a rookie, right? Yeah. yeah. No, Andrew hey. Wiggins took a step back. He was hurt. Yeah. Like he had to could go through a lot, and the fact this team was even in the play in was like obviously they lost to the Kings, but you know. I mean, Steph, he's still Steph. Eh? Like, and his stats may not have been the greatest. He averaged 24, like 5-5 five and five or close to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's Efficiency still Steph Curry. It's still solid. Yeah, it's still Steph Curry. from the field. I mean, he, he's better than that, but 41% from three. That's still Steph yeah. level right there. Yeah. So. Especially with the volume he's been, he's been taking shots. He's had to really carry that Warriors team. Mm-hmm. Because especially his teammates was wasting in that year. Because good grief. Um, 10, 10, I really went back and forth at 10. It's a few players I could have put here, but, hmm. Based on merit and reputation, I think I'm going to put KD at 10. Okay. He averaged 27, very efficient basketball. Like you said, his defense took a decline, but he's still KD. He's still... If Mr. Efficiency, efficiency man, mm-hmm. so you got to got to keep him at ten, at, uh, top ten still. Next year, I'm gonna give you some list of players I want to see in the top ten next year. Uh, I want to some. I, I'm not listen. I'm not against taking the old guys out. Yeah. I just need to see the the other guys really step in and really like Take move the them. I ain't about to just give it to them. Just I'm. Just, they need to move them guys out the top ten. Top players I want to see in the top ten. I want to see Ant in the top ten. Mm-hmm. Ja. Yeah. Jalen Brunson. I look I want to yeah. see Jalen Brunson in the top ten. Um 
That might be it. Word. Devin Booker? No Devin Booker? I would like to see Book in the top ten. I mm. would. But those are like my top three or four guys. So, um, who I, I said Jalen Brunson, yep. Ja, and um, Ant. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Those are the three I really want to see take that superstar mm-hmm. type title. So gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. you. No, that, that sounds great. I mean, they're on the bubble for me for sure. Yeah, they definitely in the top 15. I like I like your list. I kind of had, if I would do a definitive list, that would be something similar to it. I think the KD Steph thing, I will probably switch those two. I, see, I was debating on doing that, but I'm like, I'm looking at the situation. I said, honestly, the Suns were a better situation. Right, right. Well, I mean, at least you, he who, had another 27 points per game score. That, that, is, that is true, but the roster yeah. and the coaching, ugh. They were they were winning off a of straight <laughs> straight talent. Yeah, true. <laughs> and Bradley Beal, uh, um, Bradley Steele. Yeah, uh, him. You will oh not my. be remembered. Did, did you? I don't know if you saw. It was like clips of him on defense. It's like on Twitter, people posted. Oh, we clips knew of he him. was cheese on defense. Ooh, boy, it was it was bad. It was really really bad. And you know, we already know that the offense it, it just wasn't there this year. The efficiency numbers just wasn't there this year. And he was dealing with all types of injuries. Yeah, couldn't stay on the court. They were just playing whoever offense. Fleece them boys. See ya. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> that that whole situation. I mean, you're right. They did have Devin Booker and the supporting cast. I mean, uh, it wasn't the greatest, but he had Devin Booker, and they had some type of shooting, like with the Warriors. I mean, what type of shooting did they really have besides maybe a couple of players? Yeah. So you're right. I mean, I, I understand that. I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to be one. mad if anyone wants to swap KD and Steph. I think people are going to – Feel some type of way about Embiid at four because of his Man, playoff. Oh my goodness, y'all need to give it a rest. Embiid is a top five player in the league. Like, please let's not get delusional here. I know it's cool to hate hate on players and stuff and make fun of them due to their woes, but let's be real. If I put in Tatum in top six, I gotta put Embiid in the top five. I, I just think Embiid's dominance, like when he's on the court. He's like the best player most like almost every night. He averaged thirty two a game against the Knicks on one bad knee. Like dude had all types of metal on his yeah. in his knee and he still Man, dropped. Man, I was is I wasn't moving and stuff. Like come bro, he was taking all he was on all types of drugs. Like, come on now. <laughs> and he still dropped fifty. People forgot what he was doing before he got hurt. Bro, he was Leading the league, he he was in the running for like MVP. Like he was number one at one point, and then all of a sudden injuries happened. He had to take some time off, and then you know Jokic, he came out of you know, he averaged Jokic thirty four this year, bro. If you look at the poor fifty two percent shooting, t- eleven rebounds, five point. Come on, let's not be let's let's get for real here. Let's bro, be for real, bro. If you look at his averages per month, he's averaging over thirty something a game. Well, I think maybe one month he may average forty. Like this is this is who we're talking about. Like Tatum is not doing it. I get it. Tatum is winning. Tatum's constantly in the hunt for the championship, but oh, he 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 just has a better supporting cast. He's had better coaching, and when you look individually as a talent, I can't I can't name you five players better than Joel Embiid. I'm sorry. Like he's just too good. He won the MVP for a reason. He's just too good. He is too talented and. You just have to give him credit. You you have to give him his respect. He's he's James Harden as a center. Like James Harden was the exact same way. Amazing offensive talent, putting up historic numbers for his position. The same with Joel Embiid. When I look at Joel Embiid, I know this this is becoming a Joel Embiid segment. When I look at Joel Embiid, outside of Jokic, he has seventy points this year too. Oh, I forgot about that. Outside of Jokic. Name me a more skilled center than Joel Embiid. You can't. Name me a more skilled center. There's not one. And don't give me Hakeem because Hakeem couldn't shoot threes. Hakeem didn't have the dribble package of Joel Embiid. Oh, you meant all time? Yeah. Oh. A more skilled center than Joel Embiid outside Nikola Jokic. You can't. You can't name one. You can't. Don't give me a don't give me Kareem. Don't give me Hakeem. Don't give me Shaq. Shaq wasn't skilled at all. He was he was brute force. 
there's no other center that has the skill level of a Joel Embiid outside Nikola Jokic. And we, we're just going to, you know, just like, oh, let's play off woes. Oh, he can't get it done. Oh, he hasn't been to a conference final. It's like, shut up. Why? <laughs> look, look at the tape. Look at the games. And you can't tell me that this dude isn't one of the top five best players in the NBA right now. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 always hurt. He we understand that over fifty points three times, fifty or more three times this year. Unbelievable, unbelievable. And uh, if I if I don't recall, I remember I think and he's playing with Tobias Harris for crying out loud. If, if we got to remember, I remember this year. Uh, I think MB scored seventy. I think Luca may have scored like. I think 70, 70 something, 72? Maybe. Yeah, something something like not too far from, uh, I think it may have been a couple days or a week or so afterwards. Yeah. I remember, I think. It was a weird stretch. Like Carl Anthony Towns. Carl Anthony Towns had like 60 Same day, same yeah. day, dropped like 60 something. But yeah, man, like MB, he's, he's top five. Yeah, let's, 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 let's get serious here. I think Shea, I think the Shea one is, is going to be also controversial. Like where you, where you put Shea but in yeah, the conversation. Per, points per game, number one seed. In, in a tougher conference. I know, but people think, oh, well. He he was getting his game off on everybody. He he was. He was. But you it's know, just the rest of his team stunk up the joint. You know, you know how people, they're going to be like, oh, well, how high can you put Shea over Tatum? Like, Easily. Tatum, Tatum, he's he's won a championship. Tatum, he also first team all NBA. Tatum, he can defend. He can he can pass. He can score. How you gonna put how you going to put Shea over Tatum when Shea hasn't done as much as Tatum? I just didn't. Embiid hasn't done as much as Tatum either. Right, right. So I'm, I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Oh, I'm just, okay. I'm just letting you know what people are going to try to argue because there's going to be a lot of idiots out there. Man, let me tell you something. Y'all are taking these rankings way too personal. Listen, the discrepancy between four, I mean between five and six, is not that wide. Like only man, you know how these people have lost their mind. If someone told you you was a top six player at whatever you did in the entire world, only these fools would get offended by it. And you know, here's the thing: I want I want to tell you this. After three, in my opinion, any player can move up to four. I love I love Joel Embiid, but I think any player after three, it's it's on and popping. It's up for grabs. Like, like you can shuffle it. It's like it's like a game of cards where you got the person shuffling the cards. Like anybody could move up to number four. Yeah. For after after three, anybody can move up to four. In my opinion, four or five, like it is possible. I look at all these ten players right now. They're all superstars. They're all MVP caliber. Yeah. Every one of those players that we just named are all MVP caliber, all superstars. And after three, it's up for grabs. You can have a great year and you can move up to four you can you can move up to five it, it's that close yeah it's it, like it's not the margins aren't very large it's not like i'm saying shea is so much better than no i'm just saying i, I got shea above tatum it's, it's not 2016 2016 it was definitive it was like lebron is number one steph is two steph is two kd is three, three. Kawhi four um five oh. is hard oh, yeah and then everybody else, they're, they're, they're Russ getting, was probably six. Yeah, Russ was six. Like it was just that's just how it was. Like it was more definitive. It mm-hmm. was more no. These are the definitive top five, top six players, and everybody else. It is what it is. Like you, you might have a Paul George in there, you know, shuffle maybe maybe eight or nine or something. But that that was that was what it was. Nowadays, it's so close that you can argue for freaking. Kevin Durant to be top five. You could argue for this player to be top five, and I wouldn't be mad at it. I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I understand. That's just how it is nowadays. Top three, I believe, is, is definitive, in my opinion. I, I think Giannis is two. I think Jokic is one. I think Luka is three. But everybody else, man, don't matter who it is. Yeah. You can argue for either or. Now, if you have Tatum at three, then I'm, 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 I'm like, looking at you I sideways. I, I feel like you glazing a little bit, yeah. but everybody else, I mean, it's up. Like number three is best. Top three is best in the world territory. Yeah, th- that's Those, that. that's what the top three is compete. They compete for best in the world. Four, th- four and up is like superstars. Yeah, four and up, four and up is like you're you're, you're superstar, your MVP caliber, but it's still like a level. 
that you need to reach to in order to get to, to the top three. Like, top three is, in the history, you, you got LeBron, KD, Steph, LeBron, KD, Kawhi. Like, those guys right there, championships. They, yep, that's, that's, that's the final difference. Final appearances. You got a finals appearance, yep. Deep like, playoff runs, about. leading the team. That's what it's about, and yeah. All right, man. Well, I'm glad we had that discussion. I want to talk about maybe next time we do the top. I'll do it based on the season, yeah. the previous season. I'll, I'll give my definitive top ten in a later date, just not right now. Uh, more NBA news. Paul George. There is uh, something going on with Paul George and the Clippers. I, I don't know what's wrong with this dude. So he don't want to do nothing. He went on his podcast. He talked about what he wants from a team, and I'm I'm a bit confused. I'm I'm a bit I'm a bit confused. He doesn't want to do the dirty work anymore. He feels like he feels like when they traded for Harden and they got rid of Covington and they got rid of Batum, two guys that do, did all the glue work, that now the responsibilities lied with Ka- with um Kawhi and himself. My thing is that you're getting paid all that money, <laughs> dude, and you're supposed to be a two-way player. What do you expect? That you're you're supposed to do that stuff. Now I understand. Yeah, you you have your role players that are there to do certain things, right? That like rebounding, blocking shots, right. etc. But as a two-way player, well, you're supposed Alleged, to be a two-way yeah. player, and supposed as a guy that's player. supposed to be great on offense. That that's what you're supposed to do, and for you to just go out there and say, "Oh, this is what I want from when when I go to a team," I'm I, I'm just not feeling it. And when you look at the Clippers situation, and and you watch the games and you see how Paul George has steadily declined over the years, like he doesn't have the same burst, he doesn't have the same ability to get yeah. by people. Yeah, it was definitely apparent this year. And he's gonna want a lot of money. He's gonna want a four year deal. I expect he wants a five-year deal for the Clippers. He's going to demand a lot of money. You're going to, he's going to demand over 40 M's. I, if I'm the Clippers, I'm not re-signing him. Like, I'm sorry. I'm doing maybe a sign-in trade. I'm not re-signing Paul George. Because why would I want to pay him $40 million when he's a no-show in the playoffs half the time? It's a no-brainer. I, for me personally, I would just start over. This is a perfect time to start. Cut over. your losses. Cut your losses, and they're in a bad. They're in a very tough spot because they're going to that new stadium. Well, you you just re-signed Tyrell Lue, which is good, but you have Kawhi. Yeah. How how are you gonna do that? They're in a tough spot right now. They're 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 in the worst possible situation you could be in, where you're teetering on being good, or teetering on rebuilding, and right yeah. now they're in a tough spot. It's it's the same. They pretty much it reminds me of the Bulls and how they they try to convince themselves that they can compete when they're really not good enough to compete. And right and with the with the with the Clippers, they they see the Lakers, they see all these other teams, the Warriors and everything like that, and how they're constantly trying to compete with them, compete for viewership, and they they need to cut their losses. They need they they shouldn't resign Paul George. That's just too much money. What where where are you? Where are um, you with this situation? To get on a public platform like your podcast and air out those type of grievances, I wouldn't want to sign him back either cuz at this point what do you want to do, Paul? You just want to just what do you, like what do you want to do at this point? You don't want to do dirty work. You don't want to be the guy f- for real. like what do you want to do at this point? So I'm I'm not I'm like man I'm not trying to deal with this, especially for a guy that is a a known playoff dropper. So I'm like man nah I'm I'm I'm, I'm cut, like I said, I'm cutting my losses too if I'm the Clippers. I know it's going it's going to hurt the viewership or whatever, but like this dude right here, I try to get something for him. I, like you said, sign and trade or something, but but nah. Remember what he said last year. Remember it was about him and Kawhi being the number one or something like that. He And I I forgot exactly what he said. Well, he said he was going to be on his bully. Remember, well, number one, he said, I'm, I'm going to be on my bully ball. Yeah. But then he said something about being the number one option and how uh-huh. he feels comfortable being the number two. <laughs> and I'm just like, yo, oh, man. Like, dude. 
Cause um I remember I remember he said something about being uncomfortable with the role on the team. And him and Kawhi I wouldn't necessarily say butting heads, but just the chemistry wasn't there. And once he could finally feel like everything isn't on his shoulders, I think that's what he's sort of trying to say. Hmm. That he, he felt more comfortable in his role and uh, just hearing that, just that certain mentality. Uh, there's a reason why he 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 um, comes up short in the playoffs. Yeah, he just has he just doesn't have that certain edge that you would want from a player. And that's no disrespect to Paul George; he's an amazing talent. But we have to be real with you and your career in Indiana and OKC, and then with the Clippers. You just you falling short every time and. Part of that maybe your mentality. You're just not that killer yeah. that we thought you were. I mean, you were top ten player. I mean, shoot, he be advertising it like he's one of them. And Ball then, game. Yeah, and then and then all, oh yeah, <laughs> Jeff T. Yeah. Jeff T. C. J. He talked about C. J. Miles, Miles, and he yeah he brought him a video <laughs> and <laughs> Ball game, and you know it was him breaking a shot. <laughs> so yeah, man, it's just it's just a bad look. The Clippers should cut their losses, but I don't. I don't think they will. I think they're just, they're so desperate for attention to try to get people in seats that I think they're going to offer them the money. And there was a report that the Knicks are inter- may be interested in Paul George. Like I said, I said it, it seems like a perfect situation for the Knicks, even though giving them forty M's would be kind of bad. A bad look. I'd rather get Paul George that money than OG Ananobi, who who's demanding thirty five M's. Yeah. So I wouldn't put it past Paul George to go to the Knicks, even though you're gonna have to hey ain't gonna be no yeah, nights yeah. off. You're gonna yeah. have to play some defense now. You're gonna have to really get Tom in your ain't playing. You're gonna have to really get in your bag defensively. All but right. At least they got the dirty the guys willing to do the dirty work. Mm, yeah, yeah. You have Josh Randall, Hart. you have Josh Hart, you have um Dante DiVincenzo, you you have guys. I mean, if they're trying they to trade. If they resign Hardenstein, they said they plan on resigning him. Ah, that's gonna be hard because he he's the man. He's going to demand yeah. a lot of money, like twenty. I heard twenty M's maybe. God damn, like for <laughs> for a dude, he, he's solid, but twenty M's for a role player. If you expect him to keep developing, man, these dudes nowadays, especially the center position, it's such a. It's such a must-needed position. You know, center center in the NBA reminds me of line in the NFL. Line, yeah. Like you truly don't understand how important it is until you have a bad one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now nowadays the center position is so coveted because there's not a lot of good centers in the league. Yeah. It's so little that when you're able when you're able to find one, most teams be keeping them. They be holding them hostage. They yeah. give them whatever they want. If you're able to find one, if you're able to find one that's Semi decent, <laughs> you you struck gold. But then when 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 it's time for free agency, they going they ain't gonna man, demand a lot of money because again the position is highly coveted and there's not a lot of them out there. So twenty M's is crazy. All right. Um. Oh yeah. This this one really pissed me off. This trade right here. The Thunder oh traded goodness. Josh Giddy for Alice Caruso and it was they didn't give up no a one picks to one trade. a one to one trade this this was the what most what are the bulls doing yeah this pissed me off and th- this was this this just shows us that number one they're going to not they're going to let Lonzo Ball go he's probably going to get cut get get a buyout and it's unfortunate for Lonzo Ball but yeah Josh Giddy and they were and they were campaigning. They were they were putting Alex Cruz out there like, oh yeah, you you gonna have to give up multiple first. Yeah, you're gonna have to give up a player, a good player for him. I'm like, yo. And then it's just, oh, at the end of the day, we're just gonna we're just gonna do a one on one trade. Like it's just gonna be, oh, just give us Giddy and we're good, Bruh. <laughs> bro. You know how many people would have done that trade? Everybody. What? You telling me jo- all it took was a Josh Giddy type of player for Alex Caruso? I don't know if they're banking on him developing, but he, the only thing I see him do good is pass. He can't defend. He can't shoot. What does he do well? At least Alex Caruso is a 3 and D. 
and like a high end three and D player. Mm hmm. He's a, he's a great role player. Yeah, a great role. That's player. a championship type role player. Yeah, and you gave him to the best team in the West for pretty much nothing. I'm still mad well, the to this best day. Best record team in the West. I'm still mad to this day. Palenka didn't resign him. They could have. They could have resigned him. But they really decided could've. to sign Taylor Horn Tucker, which made absolutely no sense. And I said it when it happened. I was like, I don't know what people him were over. seeing. Man, but but anywho, that was that was that was a long <laughs> a time ago. Topic. We don't we don't need to talk about that. But yeah, man, you you gave Alice Caruso away for pennies, dude. It just made no sense. It just made a lot. I a lot guess of no the sense. Bulls are just trying to go younger. They, I guess they're getting rid of DeRozan too, man. Zach Levine. I would hope they finally get rid of DeRozan. They just need to just blow it up. Like yeah. y'all, y'all, y'all not, yeah. y'all not competing. Like Vucevic, get rid of Vucevic. Get rid. Kobe of Kobe White's DeRozan. taking a new step. So try to build, have him be one of the core pieces of the rebuild. Just rebuild for the future. But I don't yeah. know. I don't know if, if that that front offense wants to do it because they've been so reluctant in trying to go full rebuild for so long. Like, they've been trying, they've been constantly like, oh, you know, we got a good enough team to compete for a playoff spot. Like, really? Are, are we being for real right now? Like, you really want to be so delusional, so naive that you think that this team is good enough to compete them, for a playoff them spot? Two games of, them two games of playoff revenue ain't moving the needle that much. Just, just to be in the play-in. Just to compete for the plan, like you, you think, you think that's good enough. The Chicago Bulls to just compete in a plan. And the funny thing is, they so thirsty for playoff attendance and stuff. The Bulls lead; they they like one of the top attendance teams, no matter what their record is. <sighs> Man, this I feel bad for Bulls fans. They shouldn't be. I'd be to you this. know how mad I'd be if I was a Bulls fan and I see the Magic about to lap us and, and they was just in the lottery not to. You kidding yeah, me? Yeah, they they were in purgatory too at one point, but now they're doing great. Won forty something games. They, yeah, they made all the right decisions. They they getting the number one pick definitely helps, and they also have other guys that support Paulo Bancaro as well. So, yep. They've just done a lot of good decisions. They they were like, hey, we're going to go full rebuild, and they have benefited for, from it. The Chicago Bulls on the other end, they just don't want to go full rebuild, and I just don't understand. It's like your team is not good. It's like kicking the can down the road. Like eventually you're going to have to put it in the trash. It's like why, like why do you want to continue to be mid all the time? Like I'd rather be trash than mid because mm. at least I know that, okay, they're going full rebuild. We're going to get – Possibly a really good pick. I I just don't understand the logic. It just doesn't make any sense, and they continue to do over. The reason they ain't win nothing since Jordan was dead, and, and, and it's because remember when everybody was healthy, when Lonzo Ball was healthy, when when um, Demar Derozan, you had Demar Derozan, you had Zach Levine, and everything. They were like at one point the number one seed. Yeah, they were. And they were like, oh my God, we're we're making all the smart decisions, and then everybody gets hurt. It's like you, you have to you and have then, to adjust. You have yeah. to go to Plan B. And then you get hurt. Then you get dropped to the eighth seat. Now you got to play Giannis. <laughs> you you have to you have to adjust. You you have to go to Plan B. Okay, that didn't work. All right, time to rebuild. The plan didn't work. It looked promising, but it is what it is. It happens. You took a gamble and it didn't work. So now you got to go to Plan B. And it seems like they're reluctant to go to a full on rebuild, and that's unfortunate. All right. Um I wanna go I think I think we'll uh we'll pass on the Ryan Garcia stuff. I wanna go I wanna go to the final topic. I wanna go to Angel Reese and Kalen Clark. They just played a game yesterday. It was a really good, good game. game. Really good, good game. game. Um Angel Reese had another double double. She's really she been, like twenty four, twenty five, something. She's like that? been killing it these past couple good of efficiency. weeks. She's been killing it. She's still Inconsistent on the efficiency, but you know she's a rookie. It happens. Yeah. I'll say this because there, there's been a debate on rookie of the year right now. Um, I think I saw the numbers for Caitlin. She's averaging like 16 points, five assists, five rebounds. Uh, Angel, I have to see her numbers. Angel Reese. Angel Reese is averaging 13, 11, two assists, one point seven steals, and for blocks. 
You know her efficiency her, numbers? Her efficiency, she's shooting 40% from the field. Ugh. I mean, but, you know, she's a rookie. And I think Kaylin Clark, she's shooting. She's not shooting well from mm-hmm. efficiency. So, But she's a guard, and she's getting blitz a lot, and her team is, is just terrible. Who do you who do you have as uh, the leader in the rookie of the year race? I mean, those two girls right there, they're they're neck and neck. Um, at the end of the day, it's going to. Mm, Kaylin Clark is shooting thirty nine percent from the field, thirty five percent from three, averaging five point six turnovers. At the end of the, it might come down a record at the end of the day, which is surprising for a rookie of the year, mm-hmm. but. I wouldn't be mad if Angel won. Twitter would be mad, but I, I wouldn't be, be mad. I wouldn't be mad at all. Um, I mean, she's doing something. Both like, of them are doing something that's never been done. Like Angel, I think in terms of double doubles, I think she's she's he she has the most double doubles. She's she may have the most double doubles ever as a rookie. And mm-hmm. with Kaylin Clark, if she continues to go down this path, she'll be the first rookie. To average, I think maybe over fifteen points, five rebounds, and five assists. Yes. Yeah, so. so they're both doing something that's never been done as a rookie. So yeah, man. It might come down. You like you said, it might come down to games. But it's, it's you know, we all know these awards is politics at the end of the day. So they they might give it to Caitlin. I think they'll give it to Caitlin. Yeah, I think so too. Especially if the Fever start winning, going like on another win streak, like mm-hmm. they just had. If they get to a somewhat 500 record, yeah. I'd say Kaylin will probably win. It's also a degree of difficulty as well because when you look at Kaylin, she's a guard and she has a lot more responsibility. She She's undersized and she, she's getting blitzed a lot. She's getting double teamed. Yeah. Look at the way the defense is, is guarding her. It's like, it's like, damn, she's a rookie and the defense is really keying in on her that much? With Angel Reese, I don't, I don't know definitively how the defense is guarding her, but – just off of some of the highlights I've seen, she's able to go one on one a lot more times than a Kaylin Clark. So I yeah. one thing I will say about Angel Reese, I didn't expect her to be. I knew she could rebound. She was a good rebound. I didn't think she was going to be like the best rebounder when she got into the league already. I mean, mm-hmm. dang, she grabbing boards over everybody. Yeah, I, I didn't expect that as well. I'm like she Dennis Rodman out there with the boards. Good grief! I think, but I think her game. I knew her game was gonna be something similar to this when she mm-hmm. entered the league. I knew it wasn't gonna be fundamentally sound or anything. I, I knew she was gonna. It's, it's gonna be all hustle and all, you know, bully ball at the end mm-hmm. of the day. And for the most part, my expectations of her has been met. I think she yeah, she exceeded my expectations. She's done what I thought she was supposed to do, and I'm I'm glad because we need this in the WNBA. The top two. And she's also a good defender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The top two women in the the college basketball landscape to translate to the WNBA and their top two rookies in their class. Yeah, you gotta love a, it. That's, that's, a good, that's a great. That's a, that's a sign. great sign. And hopefully, when the the other group of women that are in college and they come to the league, hopefully they can do the same thing. Yes, I need the the Mystics to start losing some more games. We're trying to get the pay. We need Paige the DC now. Oh my God! Let's not play around Yo, with it. Oh, if we get her, bruh, just imagine. We're gonna be so back. Oh man, she because she's cold. She's cold. Mm-hmm. She's just you can argue she's just as good as Caitlyn. She's right up there. Yeah, the way that she Paige plays, is good. she's she's right up there, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm I. I'm glad that it seems we're getting back to talking about the game and not just, oh, here, yeah, Kaylin, get hard the, dis- the discourse was rather tame. It was mostly basketball from what I seen yesterday, which is a good thing. Good thing. You know, get rid of all those politics. Yes, please. Let's get back to normal debates. And that that's how I look at it. Uh, is there anything else that you want to discuss before we get out of here? No, not really. I think we, you know. NBA draft is coming up. We'll, to, we'll, in the we'll, next two or so days. Yeah, we'll react to that on a later date. But, yeah, man, I mean, that's pretty much it for right now. You know, it's a, it's a slow news cycle. Yeah, man, getting ready for NFL and all. The Olympics about to come on. Ooh, soon. the Olympics, I can't wait for that. That's <laughs> going to be, oh, man, that's going to be so good. Yeah, man, we're going to have a lot to talk about. The OG is coming back. Cause yeah. They saw that FIBA stuff last year. They said, "Oh no, yeah, we we not we not letting that happen again." Yeah, they said these youngins ain't ready yet. Mm-mm. 
All right, man. Well, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below, hit the notification bell for all the socials. Also, be respectful in the comment section. You know, we be seeing them comments. <laughs> be respectful. And we'll see you guys in the next episode of Course Up Your Podcast. Thank you guys for watching. And peace. Salute. <laughs> and stay, stay cool out here. It's hot as a mug outside. Just let me be me.